Yo, what's good, Bills Mafia? The Rev here, and you are now tuning in to episode 3 of Rated Rev, right here on the Buffalo Fanatics Network. Alright, Bills Mafia, before we go any further into the show, I need you to do this one thing for me. Like, comment, and subscribe. If you're not yet tuned in to the Buffalo Fanatics Network, subscribe to the channel and turn the bell notifications on. All right, now let's dig in. All right, welcome back to the show. But yo, Bill's Mafia, let me know how you're feeling right now, huh? Tell me how are you feeling when you think about everything that has transpired over the past week regarding free agency how do you feel look let me know in the chat and in the comment section of this video but like, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be 100 with you i cannot think of another time in my fandom where i have been this legitimately excited about buffalo bills free agency i mean i, I think probably the closest that i can get to was when we signed mario williams and that was likely only because we were so bad and there was like almost no chance of him coming to Buffalo, right? On top of that, we know, I mean, God rest his soul, the late uh, Ralph Wilson was cheap. He was cheap. He, he didn't want to sign his own free agents, let alone spending big money to get free agents to come to Buffalo. So when we got Mario Williams, I was ecstatic, <laughs> okay? But that's probably the last time i can remember being this excited but you know what i feel like 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 everything that's happened this time it, it feels different to me i don't know about you i mean let me know if it feels different to you or not but this free agency and the moves that have been made over this past week they feel different now i can't i can't go any further i mean i can't even talk about free agency without talking about the big fish that we just landed Von Miller, right? Come on, man. I mean, Von Miller. I mean, think about everything that happened. Think about all of the signings. This one feels different to me, especially when we talk about Von Miller. Now, I'm going to tell you why it feels different to me. Because I believe that it's more than just money. This signing, when we brought in Von Miller, I believe it was more than just money, right? Because when you, when you think about it, when you think about it, the Bills did not necessarily overpay to get Miller to come to Buffalo. It's not like the Bills were trash back in 2012 when we were no good and we have to overpay guys to come to Buffalo, right? We did not overpay Von Miller to come to Buffalo. In fact, they actually paid, what I would say about market value for, for, for uh, one of the top free agent pass rushers in the league. I mean, when you look at, Chandler Jones and what he signed in, 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 in Las Vegas, what was it, about like $17.5 million in, in what average annual salary? So when you compare that salary to what Von Miller got, it was, it's very, very comparable, right? I think, I think a lot of people are just getting, like, they're getting lost in the sauce when they think about six-year $120 million, right? We know that it's, that's, that's, that's not the deal. It's, it's a three-year, what, 50-plus million dollars, what, $17 million a year, give or take. Very, very comparable to Chandler Jones and what he got in Vegas. But think about what Miller did, though. He left Los Angeles to come to Buffalo. He left Los Angeles to come to Buffalo. Think about it. Don't, don't, don't let the media fool you, Mafia, okay? Don't let the media fool you. Von Miller wanted to be in Buffalo. He wanted to be in Buffalo. I, I get it. It's, it's shocking when you think about it because you look, you're like, you're like, wait, wait, hold on. He left Los Angeles, the city of Los Angeles alone, all right? Great city. We know that, okay? But on top of that, he just won a Super Bowl with the Rams. On top of that, he was playing besides arguably the best defensive player to go down in the history of the National Football League and will be a first ballot Hall of Famer in Aaron Donald. That team was loaded with talent. And don't think for one second that Sean McVay and the Rams were not doing everything in their power to bring Von Miller back to L.A. to run it back. If you think they were trying to shoot him some hometown discount because he just won a Super Bowl, you're sadly mistaken. I, I believe that the salary was very comparable, okay? 
But Von Miller wanted to be in Buffalo. I know, I know, it, I know it sounds weird, but he wanted to be in Buffalo. Listen, let me prove to you, all right, what he said. This is going to come out of Von Miller's mouth. Don't, again, don't listen to the media. I know they're going to want to trash and talk about, oh, well, Von Miller only came to Buffalo because he had 120 million reasons why. No, squash that. Listen to what Von Miller himself said, and I quote, the only way that you can walk away from that, talking about what he had in L.A. with Aaron Donald, is to walk into something special. Something special. What they're doing here is extremely special. They're going to win a Super Bowl with or without me, right? They've built an amazing team. And then he goes on to say this, Josh Allen and Diggs on the offensive side to this defense, the number one defense in the league. They've made the number one defense even better. And then he goes on to say this, which is, which is, if that wasn't enough, listen to what he said next. He said, yo, I have been a fan of this Bills team for a very long time. In fact, I thought I was going to be a Buffalo Bill when I first got drafted. I was okay with it back then. And I'm definitely okay with it now. And then the cherry on the top. Josh Allen is one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to be a part of this. Oh my gosh. Do you think, did you hear that? Just let that soak in your minds for a second. One of the top tier Defensive ends in the league who became a free agent wanted to be a Buffalo Bill. Not just because of the money, but because he wanted to be a Bill. And he thought that this team had something special. That this team is special. This team is building something different. And when you think about that mafia, you have to have a serious team to pull Von Miller away from what he had in Los Angeles considering he just won a Super Bowl look Buffalo has now become a free agent destination think about it they have become a free agent destination players see a legitimate Super Bowl contender with Tons and tons of talent on both sides of the ball, excellent coaches, and a GM who is all in. I mean, it, it, yeah, it, it it still to me it still feels so real, right? I'm still I'm still like like kind of pinching myself, right? I'm still pinching myself. But look, Mafia, get used to it and enjoy it while you can, because the Buffalo Bills have been become a free agent destination for not just, you know, the low tier free agents who are looking for a chance. I'm talking about the big fish, the big dogs, the big dogs. And Vaughn Miller is not going to be the only one. You heard it here first, Buffalo. You heard it here first. Watch what happens next. Watch what happens next. And especially in the coming years, we got Josh Allen. Josh Allen is the selling point for the Buffalo Bills. You know, all those years when we were uh, having to deal with the New England Patriots and Tom Brady, free agents wanted to come to New England. Why? People say, oh, it's, it's you know, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's because of Bill Belichick or it's the Patriot way. No, 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 it wasn't. It's the Brady effect. The Brady effect. That, that's the only reason why free agents wanted to go to New England was because of Tom Brady. Well, now we are on that side of the, uh, the, the line, Mafia, where we have a quarterback, a superstar quarterback, who Von Miller himself said is a creature who is pulling in top dog free agents left and right. They want to come play in Buffalo with Josh Allen. Enjoy it. Enjoy it and get used to it. So, when we think about what has all transpired over the past week with free agency, I want to talk about it. I want to talk about it. Let's look at the free agent additions that, that, that Brandon Bean, big baller Bean, has made this 
past week. On offense, he kicked things off with Roger Saffold, Pro Bowl guard. Then he brings back Isaiah McKenzie, O.J. Howard, Case Keenum, and Matt Barkley. All right? Then on the defensive side of the ball, this is when he went crazy. Daquan Jones, Tim Settle, bringing back Jordan Phillips, Shaq Lawson, and then tops it all off with Vaughn Miller. Look, Brandon Bean is a wizard. He is a genius. He is whatever you want to call him. He's all that in a bag of chips. Brandon Bean, big baller Bean, is hands down the best GM in the NFL right now. I don't care what anybody else has to say. He is. They don't call him Big Baller Bean for nothing. There's a reason why he has that moniker, and he's proving it this year. Now, what I like, though, about what BBB, Big Baller Bean, has done this offseason, that to me separates it from other offseasons since he's been here, is that, for one, it shows his ability to be brutally honest in his evaluations of the roster. Right? Bean is brutally honest when it comes to his evaluations of the roster. Specifically, when we think about the weaknesses of this team, when we looked at the defense, I know you say, well, we had the number one defense. I know, I know, I know. But the D-line, though, right, for all intents and purposes, was a disappointment last year. Okay? It was a disappointment last year, and it's been, always been something that he's been trying to improve upon. Okay, but it is secondly, it's his willingness to do whatever he can to improve the roster. Brandon Bean, I mean, he, he does it, guys. He does it. Now, whether or not we agree with everything he does, we cannot say we don't have a, a we can't say that we don't have a competent general manager. We have dealt with incompetence for Years upon years, but we finally have a general manager who knows what he's doing. He knows his stuff. And then think about it. This is only the first wave of free agency mafia. Only the first wave. Get ready because I believe that there's going to be more to come as we look forward to what's left of free agency and then even moving forward into the draft. So with all of that being said, like, what's next, huh? What's next for Brandon Bean? Now, we know, we know his MO, right? We know his MO. His MO is to fill as many needs as possible in free agency. And that's what he does. He uses free agency to fill all of the needs he can, so that way when he goes into the draft, he can select best player available. All right? So he, well, that's, what, that's, that's what he's doing right now. He's filling needs, and he's not just, just adding, you know, you know uh, bottom-tier players just to fill a need. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's actually adding legitimate talent to fill these needs in preparation for the draft, okay? But now, with that in mind, though, and the draft only a month away, what does Big Baller Bean need to do next? What are some holes, though, that still need to be filled and how do you think we will fill them? I want to hear from you. Let me know in the chat. Let me know in the comment section what you think Bean still needs to do in free agency and as we move forward into the draft. Okay? So now, we're going to get into another segment. This segment right here is going to be called Fill That Need. All right? Feel that need. Now, the game is simple. The game is simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to list the needs that are still left on the team, and then we're going to go and feel that need via, one, free agency, two, trade, or three, the draft. You got it? I'm going to list the needs that still need to be filled, and then we're going to feel that need via free agency, trade or the draft all right now before we go into that keep in mind 
Brandon Bean recently said that they're currently right up against the cap. Right up against the cap, all right? Now, we know he's a wizard, but he's, he's right up against the cap right now in case you're, you're looking at free agency, all right? I just, I just wanted to throw that out there, okay? Now, now I'm obviously by myself here doing this game, okay? But you all can play along, okay? We can be interactive. You all can play along in the comment section and in the chat, all right? So are you ready? So now, let's fill that need. All right, need number one, wide receiver. Wide receiver. Uh, for me, guys, I am going to say draft. That's, that's, that, that's what I'm choosing. For me, I'm choosing the draft. Okay? Now, here's why. The free agent cupboard is, 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 is pretty bare when you think about it. All right? I mean, now, now there are, you know, maybe a, a handful of receivers who have, like, that name recognition. Okay? But they're older and they're expensive. Remember, Bean is up against the cap. All right? But now, when you look at the draft... This wide receiver draft class is littered with talent. Littered with talent. I'm talking about from top to bottom. You can probably get good wide receivers all the way up into round four, round five. I mean, we think about where Gabe Davis was drafted, right? I mean, think about it. I mean, th this, this draft class is, is, is pretty stocked, okay? And so we can get them to round four, round five easily. All right. I mean, it's, it's, it's like Baskin Robbins 31 flavors when you think about all the wide receivers and the different styles and flavors of wide receivers that you have available in this draft. So I, I, I'm hedging my bet upon a rookie or even two rookies um, as a very low cost option to add higher quality talent to the wide receiver room. Okay, so I'm going draft with wide receiver. Let me know what you think right here in the comment section, all right? Number two, number two, O-line. O-line. You say, Rev, we just signed Ryder Saffold. Yes, I understand that. But for the O-line, I am going the draft as well, okay? Now, after landing Ryder Saffold and the possibility of getting Ryan Bates back, our starting offensive line, for the most part, is pretty much set, right? I mean, you've got, from left to right, you've got Deion Dawkins. You're going to have Roger Saffold, who's going to be, like, start. he's going to be the starting left guard. Then you got Mitch Morse. Then if Bates comes back, he's going to be plugged in at right guard. And then you have Spencer Brown going into year two, all right? So the offensive line, the starting five, is pretty much set if we get Ryan Bates back, okay? Now, Ford and Doyle, however, are, are the only real depth options that we have at the moment. So Bean is definitely going to have to add to that position. Okay? Now, last year, think about this. Last year, though, uh, uh, the Bills carried nine offensive linemen on the active roster throughout the season. They had Deion Dawkins. They had Ryan Bates. They had Morse, uh, Daryl Williams, Spencer Brown, John Feliciano, uh, Doyle, Ford, and Bakker. Okay? Those are the nine offensive linemen that they carried throughout the year. Now, of the nine from last year, only five are currently under contract. Plus, the addition of Saffold brings it to six offensive linemen. Okay? Now, assuming... Bates returns, okay, because I, I, I'm, a, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty confident that he's going to come back, okay? Um, then that, that, that leaves us at, with seven, all right? That leaves us with seven offensive linemen under contract. So based upon last year's numbers, we are two offensive linemen short if we are trying to carry nine offensive linemen like we did last year, okay? So now this draft, and this is why I'm, I'm choosing the draft, though, this draft could very well be a repeat of the 2021 draft when we when Bean double dipped, right? When he went uh, Spencer Brown and then and then and then Tommy Doyle, I can I can easily see uh, Brandon Bean double dipping this year in in the draft, getting two offensive linemen. Now, does that necessarily mean he's going to draft him back to back? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. I mean, we never know, but but I I, I do feel like he's going to add to that position, maybe two. Okay. If he's, if he's looking at what they did last year. Now, is that going to be a premium pick in round one or round two? 
It's, it's, it's very possible. It just depends on what else they do in, in free agency uh, and, and how things shake up in the draft as it approaches uh, pick number 25. So I'm saying offensive line draft. All right. Now, number three, this is the last need. And I know you guys feel the same way about this. Cornerback position. Cornerback position. Man. Man. To be honest, y'all, this, this position has me torn, okay? This position has me really torn. I mean, we, we are extremely thin at the cornerback position with, with, with Trey, Dane, and Taron Johnson as the only corners on this roster that we can trust. That's it. Trey, Dane, Taron Johnson. That's it. That, that has me extremely uncomfortable. Extremely uncomfortable. Okay? Factor in Levi's exit and then Trey's injury because, look, let's just be honest. I, I don't know how long it's going to be before Trey gets back on the field. Maybe it's, maybe he makes it September, October. Maybe it's pushed back even further. We don't know. He could have a setback. We, we don't know. I'm not saying he is. Knock on wood, Okay? But we just don't know the timetable and when he's going to return. So if you put Trey aside, we're, we're just looking at Dane Jackson and Teron Johnson. Okay, That is not enough, especially because we run that nickel defense at 4-2-5. We need more than just two. Okay, We need more than just two corners. So that's why I'm kind of nervous. And this, why this, this, this one here, it kind of has me torn when I think about it. Because there's, there's quite a bit of, of, of free agent cornerbacks available right now. Um, so, so Bean might be able to find one on the low end of the salary spectrum, um, because, you know, he's, he's pressed up against the cap. Um, but you know, with, with, with Trey, uh, uh, being out for a while and then, and then Dane taking his place, uh, we need a cornerback though, who is capable of starting right away. We need a cornerback who's capable of starting right away and a cornerback who they trust to start right away. This is the Super Bowl window right now, okay? Now, I tend to believe personally, though, that the coaching staff has a lot of faith in Dane Jackson moving forward, okay? But that they would still like to have competition um, at that position, if anything, just to push him a little bit, okay? Um, so... What I'm going to say, and I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of going back and forth with this one here, guys. Um, the easy answer for me would be draft, right? But let's shake things up. Heck, let's just shake it up, okay? I'm going to go out on a limb here and go with trade. Yeah, I'm going to say trade right now is the way they feel this cornerback position. Now, no doubt it's going to cost, right? It's likely going to, I mean, because you're not going to trade for, for you know, like just some scrub just to fill the roster spot, right? I mean, if Bean is going to trade, he's probably going to trade for, for, for a, a, a starter, okay? Not just some guy who can push Dane Jackson, you know? I think he's going to, if he's going to trade, he's going to trade for a starter who can come in and start right now. He doesn't have to worry about it. And so it's going to cost probably a premium draft pick and or a player plus some big baller bean cap wizardry to make this player fit within the cap and to make this trade happen. Now, but, think about this though, but I am going back though to what I think is, is the mentality of the Buffalo Bills organization this year and that's to go all in. Now, now, am I saying that they're gonna like turn into the Rams and just like trade all their top premium picks and 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 say forget the draft? We're just gonna you know splurge and, and do all? No, no, no. That's that's not what I'm saying. That's not Brandon Bean. That's not how he operates, right? But I do think that he's gonna make a calculated move uh, um, that will make sense going forward. Now, I don't think that they're looking to to to, to play it safe here. If they wanted to play it safe then they would have brought back Levi Wallace, who was signed for pennies on the dime when you look at what he got with the Steelers. I mean, what was it? 
two year eight million dollars? I mean, they couldn't afford four million dollars. If they wanted to play it safe, they would have just brought back Levi Wallace and call it a day. So the fact that they let him walk for 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 four million dollars <laughs> for four million dollars a year lets me know that they have something planned. I think now this is just me, Mafia. You can you can agree or disagree. I think that there is one last cat in the hat uh, and one last trick up the sleeve of Big Baller Bean that will secure the cornerback position for not just the short term, but also the long term. Who do I think that will be? I mean, I'm glad you asked. I'm thinking if we're going to trade, I'm thinking James Bradbury. That's kind of where I'm thinking right now. Now, there's an obvious connection, right, between Brandon Bean and Joe Shane and the New York Giants organization. Um, But also, Bradbury played for the Carolina Panthers before going to the New York Giants. Okay, so there's that, that, that connection as well. But in addition to that, he's a very, very good cornerback. Now, is he getting up in age? I mean, a little bit, right? I mean, not not a whole lot. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Bradbury is probably, what, 28, I think? Let me look it up real quick. I think he's approaching 29. Okay? Let me see. Let me just be for certain here. Um, he's 28. 28 years old. And I, and I think this is... His final year um, in New York under his contract. So when you think about it, if 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 Bean makes this trade, he's he he's not gonna do it just for a one year rental, right? So he's he's gonna have to be creative in this trade. He's gonna have to extend him now, right? Um, ex- he's got to extend him now. Maybe he's, he's sign him to you know give him like a two year extension on top of the final year of his deal. Or give him a three-year extension. I don't know. I mean, uh, but he's gonna have to do something like that, right? So that way he can stretch out the cap, make gives him some cap relief, and try to fit him within the cap this year. How is he gonna do it? I have no idea, to be honest with you, Mafia. But like they say, there's always money in the banana stand. There's always money. I didn't think there was a way he could pull off bringing in Von Miller, but he did it. Is there a way he can bring in? James Bradbury and fit him in the cap with a trade it's quite possible it's quite possible so I'm not too sure but it is most certainly possible when we think about that so that is another guy that we can consider all right guys so so think about this all right now I want to know what you think when you think about the the the, the needs that have to be filled we've got wide receiver offensive line and cornerback how do you think that they're going to feel that need? Let me know in the comment section and in the chat. All right, guys. Now, before I head out of here, before we close up, um, I promised that uh, I wanted to hear from the mafia, right? I wanted to hear from the mafia, okay? And um, I wanted to hear you guys' takes, all right? I wanted you guys to send me your takes, your opinions about what you think, uh, Bean is going to do uh, in this offseason, bring it, send it to the fan box, right? The, the, the rated ref fan box at gmail.com. And I was going to read it on the air and discuss it. All right. So as promised, I've got, I've got one I want to read to you. All right. And this one goes, uh, this one is coming from my man or woman. I think it's a, I think it's a guy. It's from Cybo seven and Cybo seven says this. He says, Hey Rev, how about this scenario? After Brandon Bean picks up our new corner in free agency and looks to the draft, could we have a double dip like we had the year Josh Allen and Tremaine Edmonds came out? That is, select a wide receiver at 25 like Jamison Williams, who's 6'2 and and runs a 4'3'9, then trade up into the second round for running back Brees Hall, who's 6'0 and runs a 4'3'9'40. Thanks. Um, that's a lot of talent and a lot of speed to add to our offense. Well, you know what? Uh, Cybo7, look, 
I appreciate your comment, man. I appreciate your, your, your take. Uh, 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 and look, that is very possible. I love the way you're thinking. I love the way you're, 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 you're going with this. It is very possible for Brandon Bean to double dip this year. Very possible. Now, he could very well get a corner in free agency, right? Now, this is free agency. Is he going to sign one? I don't know, but it's possible. Could he make a trade for one in this free agent period? It is highly possible, right? And so I do think that we could see something like that happening. But on top of that, though, on top of that, we could also see him go into the draft and select a wide receiver and then trade back up, possibly, uh, into round two maybe for Brees Hall. Now, Brees Hall, look, you guys, if you followed me on Twitter, you guys know how I feel about Brees Hall in the running back position. Um, I feel, I, I, you look, I have a high regard for the running back position. Look, me personally, I would draft a running back in round one. When you think about how our roster is currently constructed, I would draft a running back in round one, the top of the top in round one. Get him on a four-year to five-year contract, right? Get the best years out of him, the best value out of him, because I believe that we're going to win a Super Bowl within that time frame, okay? And nobody's going to talk about, oh, we drafted a running back in round one. You know, so I would take a running back in round one if the opportunity presented itself and our, you know, roster fills out uh, nicely here before we head into the draft. But I like the way Cybo was thinking, though. Is it? I mean, wide receiver at 25 is possible. Jamison Williams is likely going to fall. He might fall just because of his of his his ACL injury. So if he is available at 25, do I see Brandon Bean? Jumping at 25 and selecting him, man, it's possible. It'd be very hard to pass him by. Now, what are you going to have to do with him? I mean, you're probably going to have to shelve him for the year. Probably not. All right, probably not. All right? Um, but, but you can give him time to get back on the field. Maybe midseason he can come back. But you think about the talent that we already have. I mean, we've got Stephon Diggs. We've got Gabe Davis. We've got Isaiah McKenzie. Plus, we've got... Uh, 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 Dawson Knox and the new addition to the tight end room and OJ Howard. Look, this offense is probably going to look different than it has in the past couple of years under Brian Dable. Okay. OJ Howard is going to add a different dimension to the offense. It's going to probably make him multi uh, faceted. Okay. So there's weapons already at place. And then if you add Jamison Williams and just let him and just shelve him a little bit, that could be a very dangerous, uh, 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 offense when he comes healthy and gets ready to play and then going up into round two for for Brees Hall look I'm all for it guys I don't know you guys let me know what you think about Cybo 7 uh, in the chat and in the comments um, but that's how I feel about it guys but look Bills Mafia that is all I have for episode three of Rated Rev. Look, I am so glad that you joined me today. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy the rest of free agency. Think about it. We are just in tier one. Tier one is just now over, okay? We still have a lot of potential moves that can be made in free agency as we approach the draft, which is a little over a month away. Enjoy what's happened so far. And look forward to what's about to happen in the very near future. And give yourselves a, a, a standing ovation uh, because Mafia, look, Buffalo has become a free agent destination because of Josh Allen, what the Bills have done, but also because of the greatest fan base on this side of heaven, the Bills Mafia. So guys, stand up and give yourselves a hand. And also, let's give a shout out and a hand to Brandon Bean, Big Baller Bean, who is doing his thing right now in free agency. All right, guys. You enjoy the rest of your day and your time. And as always, you know how it is. You know how I do it. God bless and go Bills.